Hello. What makes a good personal study? This video will clarify where information can be found on the Pearson website and suggest some of the characteristics of a successful personal study. In particular, it will respond to requests to clarify what makes an exceptional personal study reaching level six in the assessment grid. Information about the personal study can be found on page 28 and 29 of the specification. There is a very useful support document that can be found in the course materials part of the website too. It's very useful in answering general questions about the requirements and content of the personal study in terms of the aims of the study, about the possible forms it could take and other aspects such as referencing Moderators have summed up the key characteristics of successful critical analysis that then leads on to the personal study with the following suggestions. Firstly, that critical analysis has already begun at GCSE level and that there is a smooth transition to A level. Secondly, that the purpose and nature of analysis has been taught from the start of the A level course and is thoroughly embedded into the development of practical coursework. Thirdly, and importantly, students should be able to analyze specific individual artworks and gain insights into artistic intention through their analysis of the formal elements of composition, color, line, tone, etc., rather than making simply broad generalizations about an artist's work. Two examples are shown here, looking at um, Dubuffet and Hopper. And we'll come back to these in a little bit more detail later on in the video to see how this can be done in practice. This analysis should be backed up with an understanding of how artworks relate to broader cultural ideas and themes. This might be awareness of a movement in art such as an ism or a theme such as vanitas as shown here. Self-initiated visits to exhibitions, accompanied perhaps by notebooks, can show individual research and curiosity about ideas which might relate to the theme of the personal study. Coming to the writing of the study itself, it's really useful to have a clear focus, for example, in the title itself. Perhaps raising a question that can be debated and answered is a good way forward, and this lends more depth and rigour to the investigation than vague or generalised titles. Bibliographies should also show extensive research and focus rather than being a hopeful list of lightly skimmed resources as shown in this example. So to return to the key question, what is effective analysis of specific artworks? Let's look at the example investigating de Buffet seen earlier. The student has looked at and responded to a portrait by Du Buffet in his coursework. Later, he writes in his personal study, not only the monochromatic and crudely drawn figure, but the rough and thick surface is also emphasizing his attack on the conventional genres of high art. Du Buffet chose to divert individuality and the personality of the figures by sculpting the face with a few raw lines only, not adding any details. The student precedes this analysis with a passage setting the context for the work, explaining how the power of outsider art first gained recognition in the 1920s. Though this is a brief extract and the writing is not especially polished, these passages show how the student understands how the formal qualities of a picture can express its purpose. He has researched and understood the artist's intentions and can relate these to the physical nature of the artwork. He also begins to establish its context within the culture of the time. In the example investigating Hopper's Nighthawks, the student writes about the painting. Potentiality also persists through the painting too. The male and female sit closely together while their fingers spatially overlap. However, they do not, they do not physically touch. The bartender and his customer almost look as if they are in conversation but when observed properly, they are not. It continues, these aspects of the painting all accumulate to a sense of isolation, as there are potentials of interaction. However, they cease to be. To an extent, this is almost romantic and is arguably foundational to American culture, such as in the American dream. 
Again, in this brief passage, the student brings together formal analysis of the composition with an understanding of meaning, intention and context. If these are examples of good analysis, what makes a truly exceptional personal study reaching level six? Let's look at the characteristics listed in the performance calculator. It shows that the study needs to be fully informed, that the student really has done the necessary research, read widely both about the artists and practitioners being discussed and also about the wider context. But in addition, the student needs to bring an element of genuine creativity to the study in the sense of bringing new ideas or a fresh approach that goes beyond the conventional understanding of a subject. An exceptional study will make unexpected connections and challenge accepted ideas through an authoritative knowledge. In this sense, the personal study can go beyond a conventional academic essay, which reviews the comments of others and puts forward an argument, to being an informed creative discussion which has led to genuinely unique and innovative ideas being formed. These may well then feed through into the student's own practical work. Without reading the whole study, it would be difficult to do full justice to any personal study. However, passages from the following example show elements of the exceptional qualities being discussed. The study is a debate about the ability of photographs to document people's lives and to record memories in particular in a true way. Through a comparison of Bruce Davidson and Nan Golding's work, it gets to the heart of what, a phot what photographs can and can't represent. The student introduces her theme. In a very literal sense, through a process of science and light, photography allows us to physically experience the past again. But to what extent can an image ever really be honestly regarded as a true representation of the reality it visually embodies? This is potentially a very broad theme, but the skillful choice of photographers who take different positions in the debate and the student's own authoritative sense of context enables her to examine the nature of the photographic gaze with insight and originality. In Nan Golden and Bruce Davidson's work, I see the spectrum of their subjectivity in regard to taking the photographic image. Though both seem like honest documentations of society, I believe the differences in their work derive from their contrasting execution and engagement. Golden's work radiates the intimate connection she had with the world she photographed, whilst in relation, Davidson's images seem to give an objective insight into the people he documents. Like a flower on the wall, his position as an outsider is apparent. Bringing in writers on photography such as Roland Barthes and Susan Sontag and relating their ideas to other artists who have investigated the paradox of images such as René Magritte, the student constructs an argument that is highly articulate, creative and original. I believe part of the bittersweet paradox of photography resides in essentially being an optical illusion, enticing people with the promise to reserve the moment but never fully able to do that. In the end, the photographic image is a reminder of the memory. It is not the actual memory and it is not the actual subjects, just a joyful or melancholy catalyst. The full quote of Golden's is, I used to think if I photographed someone enough, I could never lose them. In fact, they show me how much I've lost. Eventually, the spectator is looking through the photo album of their past and creating their own private view of loss. Authority is demonstrated by the economy with which ideas are referred to, and the student's depth of understanding has led to a unique and creative study. As a result, it gains marks squarely in the exceptional band of level six. In conclusion, the personal study should reflect curiosity and involvement in ideas research which shows depth of analysis, and a creative intention that should feed through into exciting and original practical responses. Ultimately, understanding and engaging with ideas leads to creativity.